Hello everyone, it's Skill here from the Grim Reapers, and today I'll be going through a short hardware review and my first impressions video for the Pimax Crystal VR headset. For the purposes of full disclosure, Pimax sent me the Crystal for this review. They didn't ask for any favourable comments, only that I give my honest opinions and feedback. They also asked that I point out that although the hardware for the headset is pretty much the final version, the software is still going through testing versions. Whilst I give a little bit of an introduction to this video, I'll play some B-roll footage of one of my first flights in the Pimax in DCS. Now this is my first time trying to do a real-time recording whilst flying in VR, so I'm just recording the DCS mirror which was displayed on my monitor. It doesn't really show how amazing and immersive it is to be in the headset, but it gives you an idea where I'm looking. Just to give a little bit of background on what qualifications I have to carry out a review for a VR headset, I've been flying flight sims for over 30 years, I bought an Oculus Rift CV1 way back in October of 2017, and from that point I was hooked on VR for flight sims. After the Oculus CV1 I upgraded to the Oculus Rift S, then two years ago I upgraded again to the HP Reverb G2. That's an excellent headset, but a few weeks ago I purchased the Pico 4 to try out the aspheric lenses that everyone was on about. This will be my first experience with a Pimax headset, so we'll see how this goes. Anyway, after about 6 years experience of flying DCS in VR, as anyone else who uses VR knows, that is a long time spent tweaking settings trying to get the most out of whichever headset you're using. Before I go on, I will tell you what my system specs are, so you can judge the relative performance of the crystal later in the video. I am currently running an Intel i7 12700K with 64GB of system RAM and an RTX 4090 GPU. Lastly, and yes, I am going to get on with it eventually, this review will be solely based on my experiences so far with the crystal, using it for flight simulation, specifically in DCS although I do plan to make further videos regarding its use in other sims and other game types in the future. Ok, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, let's crack on with what you're here to watch. Before I get to the unboxing, let's look at some of the Pimax Crystal specs. I won't read through everything, but I will post up some images and point out some of the most notable features. QLED and mini LED panels with a display of 5760 by 2880 pixels. Glass lenses, which allow up to a 35 pixel per degree display. Local dimming. Eye tracking and auto IPD adjustment. Inside out tracking. So unlike other Pimax headsets, no need for base stations. Although, you will be able to use them with an optional upgrade in the future. And last but not least, usable for PC VR and standalone. Ok, let's see what I got in the box. Here is a replacement facial interface. One of the batteries held within the charging dock. A second battery. The headset itself with the added foam protection for the head strap clip whilst in transport. I'll put the headset aside for now and come back and have a look at that later. The controllers feel nice and light, but not too light. Not flimsy. They seem to be of a kind of standard design these days with the tracking rings over the top. Quick start guide and after sales guide. A box within a box which contains all the cables and things.
Another small box, a packet containing a screwdriver and screws, I guess for changing out the lenses, and a glass cleaning cloth. A powered USB hub that Pimax recommends using to increase the battery life of the headset. Another box with some cables, a couple of USB-A to USB-C's. The headset itself. It feels really good to the touch, and despite its size being larger than the headsets I've used in the past, it feels a lot lighter than I was expecting. And as you can see, this one has the added DMAS headphones attached. The headset feels like it's made of high quality plastics and is nice to the touch, has a nice satin finish to it. The head strap is uh, articulated and has plenty of movement, allowing you to adjust it so that it fits comfortably. It has the ratchet wheel at the back to tighten it up and it has an over the top adjustable head strap. Here we have the DMAS over the ear headphones. At the top left of the headset, there's a rocker style switch for the manual adjustment of the IPD. The top right has the power button and volume controls. Behind these, there is a switch to change the headset from PC VR mode to standalone mode. There's a kind of extension to plug the DisplayPort cable into, which makes the port easily accessible. I guess this is for when you want to disconnect from the PC and go standalone. There's also a cable management channel set towards the rear of the head strap. As I say, the rear of the head strap contains the battery. The weight of the battery at the back actually balances out the weight of the headset at the front. Meaning that although the crystal is heavier than the headsets I've used in the past, it still feels balanced and comfortable enough that I don't really notice the extra weight. As for the size of the crystal, like I said, this is my first experience with Pimax, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. It is certainly larger than the G2 and the Pico 4, but again, as I said, it feels nicely balanced. I didn't find its size to be an issue. Having spent many years with VR headsets, I have in the past had both good and not so good experiences with connecting them and setting them up. I can very happily report that in the case of the Pimax Crystal, that after unboxing it, I installed the Pimax Client and the Pimax XR Control Center, connected the cables to the provided USB hub and the GPU, and was in the DCS menu in VR in less than 15 minutes after the unboxing. So in my case, the initial setup was probably the easiest and most trouble-free I've ever had with any VR headset. That being said, that was without any tweaking of settings that I know will be inevitable at some point, but it worked literally straight out of the box. Let's get to the bit that everyone wants to know about the crystal, the visual quality. Now I know that it simply doesn't do the crystal any justice, but whilst I talk about the visuals, I will show some through the lens footage. And even this poor quality footage, filmed with my mobile phone held up to the lens, hopefully you can get a bit of an idea of how clear the image is. So, like I said, I plugged it in and went straight into DCS, without changing any of my in-game settings or any of the Pimax settings, which meant leaving it at its native resolution. And the only word I can use to describe what I saw when I first put the headset on is WOW. I mean seriously, WOW. It was almost like my first experience of VR all over again. There is no way to describe how insanely good the visuals are compared to any of the headsets I've used before. The image is super sharp, crisp and clear, much sharper than even the centre of the small sweet spot in the G2. Not only that, it is the same sharp image which extends across the vast majority of the whole field of view. The field of view itself is much larger than any of my previous headsets too, particularly in the vertical aspect. The colours are just amazing. The QLED panels provide colours that are extremely vibrant and bright. The colours are even across the whole display and I could not see any sign of mirror or discoloration. The local dimming means that the dark areas can be really dark 
and the contrast between the dark and light areas is stunning. The display is even and without any distortion that I could see. If I try really really hard I can just about make out the pixels, but in real terms there is absolutely no screen door effect and because the lenses are aesthetic there are none of the Fresnel lens god rays. Did I mention the clarity and sharpness of the image? Yeah, I did. But I want to be absolutely clear about this. This is by far and away the best VR image quality I have ever experienced. As I said, my crystal has the DMAS headphones attached and the sound quality is brilliant. Certainly up there with the headphones on the Reverb G2 and much better than the piped audio out of the Rift S are the Pico 4. Ok, for the last section of this initial impressions video, I'll play some footage of a short dogfight I recorded. I recorded this once I'd done a slight bit of tweaking by turning the crystal's render resolution from native to 75% and made sure that all of the motion smoothing was turned off. To be clear, even after turning the resolution to 75% to increase game performance, I can honestly say the image quality is still far better than any other headset I've used. Here are my in-game settings, which I haven't changed and are the same as I used for the G2 and Pico 4. As you can see, the frames are hanging around at the 90 mark, with occasional spikes and dips. I'm not sure that the mirror recording is doing the crystal justice, as inside the headset, things look mostly smooth. I appreciate that this is just a simple instant action mission, however, I have flown one of our large multiplayer missions and the performance was excellent. I still have a lot more testing to do in larger missions, so I'll give updates on performance in future videos. <laughs> if nothing else, the wee picture in picture of my head flailing about wildly whilst looking for bandits will show some of the non-VR users how much movement you need to do whilst flying in VR. You can also see that the headset stays firmly in place despite its size and weight. It's very well balanced thanks to the battery at the rear. This means that I find it comfortable to wear for flying 1, 2 or 3 hours at a time, no problem. Right, I'm going to wrap this first impressions video up or I'm going to be here all night. So far I am utterly impressed with the Pimax Crystal. So much so that I can't see myself being able to go back to flying in any of my other headsets. I know I'm still in the honeymoon period with this headset and I'm still giddy with the good stuff. I'm sure after more use I will find some things that I don't like so much. As well as maybe some more things I do. I know I have barely scratched the surface with the Crystal and one of the main things I can't wait to try is the eye tracking and the dynamic foveated rendering. Which I hope will mean I can play DCS at a solid 90 frames per second at the crystal's native resolution, but we'll see. I will be back with more Pimax Crystal videos and a final verdict once I have dialed in some settings and hopefully get to show off some of its new features when I can use them. But in the meantime, thank you all for taking the time to watch this review and I'll catch you later.